here. As we begin our conversation tonight on Checkpoint, um, my guests are here with me tonight. And I believe we have fulfilled that requirement of two-thirds gender rule for this discussion. We absolutely would have to with this one. We have Dr. Mumbi Wettstein. Thank you very much for joining us. Senator Beatrice Elachi and Professor Wainaina. It's, it's good to have you all with me to have this discussion. I'll start with you, Senator, um, because you are uh, definitely in politics and in Senate. Um, and, you know, a high-ranking member of Senate being uh, the chief whip. What is your experience with, with, with women in politics? I mean, some of the numbers we're seeing aren't too good. Um, and, you know, across the political divide, this is definitely an issue that's important. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to have these numbers uh, much better than we've seen? I think, first of all, uh, we, uh, I would appreciate those who have been there before and say that uh, the work they've done for us is what has brought the fruits that we see today. And you can imagine... If we only have 16 women, if we didn't have any affirmative seats, it means in the National Assembly we would have only 16 women, in the Senate none, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that in the governors we have none. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at the politics we have even today, even going forward, uh, we were just discussing before that even when you look at the rallies, speaker number one, two, two, three, four will be a male. Before they remember, we need a woman. So it is something that uh, is driven more, not just from uh, where we sit or where we have parliament, it's also in our political parties. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a culture that we have inculcated for many, for the last 54 years. Uh, when we look at also how people perceive, even when uh, we come on media, mm -hmm. you find that if it is a man who comes in every day, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But when, when you find a woman, when you find British Elijah today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, mm -hmm. they, are, they ask, you mean there's not any other woman who comes? <laughs> so it's something uh, we need to really mm -hmm. re-ask ourselves. And, yeah. and, and one of the things I would say, and I'll tell women today, mm -hmm. that uh, men will come out always and say that the women vote is so safe. And I want to tell women, if your vote is so safe, then why can't we just change for once mm. this dynamics, knowing very well we've been unable even to bring the two-thirds agenda mm -hmm. into parliament. And uh, when we talk of two-thirds agenda, I know many men will always ask, mm. if we have only these women now, mm. and all we are seeing in parliament, what about if we get that two-thirds? But I want to say, for our country to progress to our next level, to a transition with the new dispensation. I think we want to see now leadership of women so that when you are judging women, mm. judge them with that leadership. I know many will say we've had a few inconsistencies, mm -hmm. but I wish to see women at the radar of uh, governors and then evaluate that county, how it moves on. Mm. I think at that time, then we will realize it is important to have both men and women yeah. in, in all leadership. Okay, all yeah. right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just a, a point to mention, we did invite Daisy Amdani, but she's uh, not well oh, uh, oh. this evening. So we wish her all we the best. Her, uh, uh, Daisy, yes. we wish you the best, and we hope absolutely. you'll come back. Uh, yeah. She's a good friend of Checkpoint, always absolutely. here to discuss quite a number of issues. Uh, I know she's watching us tonight from her, from her couch from her. or her bed. We wish her well. Um, mm. But... Dr. Wettstein, let's talk about this a little bit because there's a historical uh, sort of narrative to why um, it's a little difficult for women to navigate the political space. Yes. Um, talk to us about that because you've studied, uh, you know, women as, yeah. as, as part of your doctoral course. So what is this? What is this, um, you know, space that women find themselves in? It's almost like you're trying to catch up and, you know, claw back all of these narratives before you start to say, this is why I'm fit for leadership. Well, you know, I mean, if you look back, there's been so many achievements by the women's movement, right from independence with Mandalay Yawanawake, with also the women, women's po uh, political caucus, etc. But what we find is that um, there's been so much that has been fought, especially even for the two-thirds that we're seeing now. But there's this whole, um, there, there seems to be a disconnection between why it was fought for and and kind of um, what the women are achieving. Mm. And I feel that uh, 
What is her, if you look at just around the world, historically, the, when you have more women in parliament, the legislation changes, and it changes for the better, for the nation, not just for women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, more issues to do with women, more issues to do with family issues, even to do with agriculture and water. And you just see that there is a shift in the kind of legislation that is discussed in parliament, which is what the women's movement have always advocated for. We need the women's perspective because women and men think differently. And I believe that what this has done, and we have achieved a lot with the 2010 constitution. And even if you look at the numbers, mm -hmm. the fact that this time around we have 86 women mm -hmm. compared to 50 mm -hmm. in the previous, previous 10 yeah. parliaments, it's a, it's a big, big thing. Yeah. And what you're seeing is the presence of women like Beatrice um, is changing the mindset of women themselves as well. It's demystifying leadership mm -hmm. among women. And now you can see that, like for this time around, about 12 women have declared their interest in governor mm -hmm. yeah. positions. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And so this is the kind of thing that happens when women start to get involved in okay. the political arena. All right, so they start to get involved, Prof. Yes. Um, but then, you know, you, you meet that narrative. Yes. Uh, we, we have a question running on Twitter, and everybody says, and we've asked people, you know, whether they think, you know, our elective politics will be better. Yes. Uh, and you get the usual stereotypes. But so how do women rise above that? What is that language they need to speak? I know you're big on this one. Yes. What language are they speaking? Yes. Uh, what should they be speaking to sort of uh, appeal to the hearts and minds of the voters? They're, they're speaking the language of the law. They're speaking the language of economics. They're speaking the language of negotiation. And that is not the language of power. That is not the way politics works. Um, talking about Daisy, uh, I wish her well. She invited me to the women's convention about mm -hmm. two or three weeks ago mm -hmm. at Bombas of Kenya. There was... Um, a feeling that there is a woman's agenda. And, and, and when you got into the hall, there was a sisterhood there. There mm -hmm. was a sense that we as women have a uniquely women agenda that we should push with our constituents. And I remember having this discussion with Daisy after that. And I told Daisy, you know, when these women go back to their constituents at the grassroots, what narrative are they going to find there? And how are they going to plug in the women narrative mm. into whatever narrative they're going to find there? When they go back to their constituents, they're going to find a tribal ethnic narrative pushed by ethnic kingpins. And therefore, who are men. Who are men. Yeah. And therefore, they will no longer be able to push a women's agenda. They would have to push an ethnic agenda which is being fronted by male ethnic kingpins. And my argument has been, and it still is, politics is not a party that you are invited to. There are no invitations to this party. Mm -hmm. You get crushed. You get crushed into the party. You sit at the, uh, at the high table, <laughs> and you say, I have arrived, and I have come to take what is mine. What is happening with women is that they have been locked out and they are standing at the gate waving the constitution. But surely that is historical, yes. uh, you know, in the sense that women have always been, uh, you know, be seen, not yes. heard, yes. you know, sit in the corner and, yes. you know, all those things were conditioned, yeah. you know, socially, you know, a nice lady sits there and waits and it isn't too... And uh, that is a problem. Yeah. That you are, we are using the wrong methodology uh -huh. in a space that only recognizes the language of power. Okay. Uh, Beatrice has said that she was listening to one of the mm -hmm. clips you're playing, uh -huh. and first speaker was man, second speaker mm -hmm. was a man, third mm -hmm. speaker was a man, you know, fourth, fifth, you know, could be a woman. Women need to change the language. They need to start speaking the language of power. Okay. And the language of power is not give me. The language of power is, I'm here to take it. Okay. Interesting language <laughs> of power. Senator, what do you think? Your majority what? whip. Mm -hmm. Tell us about whipping all of these men, uh, you know, in line and saying this is our legislative agenda. You know, is, is that the sort of persona um, that, that you adopt? <laughs> I'll want to tell Prof, if I use the language of men, uh -huh. then I'll lose it out. I will lose it out if all... In fact, I'll... Let me give you just two examples. When you look at how we debate, and you make a mistake and decide, I would want to debate like a man, the comments you just receive, immediately you realize even people feel you are a woman, they feel you are soft. That doesn't mean I cannot play the politics of men. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I am not assertive. 
I am very assertive, but there is a way I'll have to just manage because I can't change. One of the things I will always tell women, mm. never change to be a man because the moment you do that, you lose out completely. And because you're not a man from the, in the mm. first place, people will not understand you. So be you, be me. Let me be Beatrice and just do it my Beatrice way. If I'm weeping, uh, for example, uh, my fellow senators, mm. I, I won't weep even. Uh, the, the best I normally do, I always say, I, I, I always negotiate. First of all, I have to ensure I, that they, each one has their own ego. Uh, men in politics are very interesting. They have an ego where, and that's why you'll hear one saying, why, why didn't you call me on the table to sit? Why yeah. should you? use somebody? Why should you use the third party? That's what men in politics do. But women don't mind those things at all. And that's where we now differ with men. And that, that's why you're able to speak to your colleague, who is a male colleague, and uh, have them come to the house and vote. So there are many ways of doing it. And because that's the way we were, that's the power we were given, Prof. We were given one power by God. Mm -hmm. Is this power a woman has? that will remove something okay. uh, in Kiswahili to Nasema Pangoni. Oh. <laughs> it will come out, okay. but not the way... Uh, All right. I will agree with him yeah. in terms of now messaging. Mm -hmm. That I'm also... I, I, I remember even telling women in Bomas, I mean, a time has come, you must be a politician. Yeah. But if you walk out there and start saying, oh, well, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. a woman, mm -hmm. and therefore you have to vote for me, that is gone you will lose in the morning. But you have to stand there and be a politician. Yes. Okay. Let them read you from up. Mm -hmm. Let them not look for you right. down. So it, in up. a sense, it's, it's about sort of understanding the political sphere yes. Yes. and understanding how to message that. But yes. yet, um, you know, something happened and we had the peers who came, you know, up on stage and she said what she said. But then what we saw, Senator, yes. was women then divided right down the middle on political lines. Exactly. Which, which was rather shocking or some would say disappointing because it was supposed to be women speaking with one voice in terms of mm. um, getting more women ahead. But then we just saw the usual fault lines in politics. The, 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 most, uh, the, 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 the best about that all, it was that women uh, can come out emotionally which I felt uh, quite fine. At that time, it's okay, but it was, uh, for me, I want to tell women from today, politics, that's why men beat us. They never get emotional, never. Don't they, though? No. We see certain senators getting emotional. Well, uh, Claiming to be in tears. <laughs> in, uh, that, that's just for, a game, theatrical a, a game of uh, pulling. Yeah. But men never become emotional. That's why they're able to move from party A to B to C. Mm -hmm. But look at a woman. It is so difficult. Look at, for example, uh, Honorable Margaret Kamar. Margaret Kamar, if she was a man in 2013, she would have moved and got the seat. Mm -hmm. But because she stood and said, this is what I believe in. Mm -hmm. These are my values. This is the party I'm going with. And she went down. She did not lose the governor of Wasingishu because of lack of votes. She lost just because of the party. Uh -huh. Same with uh, our lady from uh, Aldai, yeah. who has been, who was once a minister, Sally Kosge, strong right. woman, right. but just because of that. But look at the men, how they shifted very fast. But then, uh, yeah, Senator, uh, maybe, Mumbi, you can mm. weigh in here, but isn't that then the very language of politics? Um, and not to say that I endorse the moving of part, you know, from one yeah, party hoping. to another, yeah. but surely if perhaps Margaret Kamar true, true. would have played the game of politics the yeah. way it is done, we might have had, you know, one governor, you know, who's to say? I mean, there's yeah, a lot of balls yeah. up in the air, but is that to say that you see women because you're told, okay, now you won't, surely, she would have gotten another party. We saw the shenanigans mm, that were happening mm. in February when people were getting nomination certificates through the window. Yeah. Is it that we do not understand how to navigate in politics? Well, for me, like, my biggest argument has always been that women don't brand themselves. And, you know, we're in the age of branding, where you've got to, your message, you've got to come strong with your message, your look, the way you talk. Mm -hmm. And I think that you don't have to brand yourself as a man. And I agree a lot with the senator that there is a lot about womanhood and being comfortable as a woman in your, and bringing out your language, you know, and your issues as a woman. But I feel that a lot of women politicians don't brand themselves around whatever issue. There's a few now who are starting with the Mama County mm -hmm. kind of thing, but what are your issues? Who are you? You don't have to fight in the same way 
or go to battle mm. in the same way that other men do, but come out strongly with your issues, what you're standing for, okay. your track record, which is, you know, and if you look at a lot of the women that are running this time, what they've said, like the 12 women who are running for governor, yeah. what they've said is they're going on their track record, their professionalism. That's, the, that's how they're creating mileage. Although, you know, the ground isn't easy for women, as, yeah. as, as Senator will let you know. There's yeah. a lot of violence, yeah. hooliganism, yeah. abuse, mm. you know. And if you hear from the veteran politicians like Martha Karua, you have to expect to be insulted at some point, you right. know. So you, there's such, so much of a psychological preparation. <laughs> so I think that's how it has to be looked at. Okay. You know? yeah. uh, uh, Prof, so uh, you're talking about messaging yes. being different. Yes. Um, has there been an extent to which we say, uh, you know, that women will uh, sequester themselves in a corner and say we're talking about women's issues? Yes. Is that still something that, you know, um, carries weight in, in, in a dispensation like we are today? Yes, it's, it's something, and it's a good question, and it is something that is not happening, and it is something that needs to happen. If I ask you, Yvonne, today, we have... Um, people, tribal kingpins, who have organized themselves into two spurious uh, divisions of Jubilee and NASA, or whatever they call themselves, have women pushed a women agenda at the national level? When these two so-called groups push their agenda, is there a women agenda inside there? Or women are just uh, brought in to swell the numbers mm -hmm. and for these people to feel that they have, like uh, Beatrice was saying, that they have a locked in vote of women who will vote as, not as women, but they will vote as members of an ethnic uh, division. And that's why when they were mobilizing people to register, they were, the, the people in one side was not going, were not going to the strongholds of the other side to look for women, okay? Yeah. Each side was mobilizing its ethnic women. Right. Unfortunately, the women at the national level haven't pushed a uniquely women agenda. The agenda that is... But isn't the, yeah, don't yes. people, won't people get put off by a uniquely women agenda? Should you, it not be, I'm a woman, yes, yes. Uh, but I will push for an agenda that is good for all my constituents, whoever the con they will at be? The convention, at the convention in, uh, in Bomas of Kenya, yeah. were we able to tease out uniquely women issues mm -hmm. that need to be addressed because they affect women? Okay. Yes. For uh -huh. example... Uh -huh. Issues to do with health, right. okay, the health of the family. Issues to do with food security. Mm -hmm. Issues to do with water. Mm -hmm. we, 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 these are issues that affect women. So that if women were to push these issues on the on the national uh, platform mm -hmm. as women issues, then women at the grassroots would have something to respond to. But now the only messaging that women have to respond to is the ethnic messaging of the tribal kingpins. And that is why I'm saying that unless women start speaking the language of politics, saying you, you um, Jubilee, you are saying A, B, C, D. Where is the women's agenda here? Mm. And the women must push that agenda because nobody is going to tell them, now come, uh, bring mm. your agenda. Right. They have to push that agenda. For so long as that agenda is not consolidated at the national level, at the grassroots, women will vote for the messaging that has that come down to them, okay. and it is going to be an ethnic one. Why is it difficult for women who are half of the population yep. to just say, um, across the board, whether you're from the opposition, the ruling party, yep. these are our issues, yep. and we will require you to speak to those issues and how you're going to address them. Why is that difficult, Senator? Uh, one... What I want to tell women, so that because uh, it is, you've given us a good platform mm -hmm. to be candid to also to our electorate, to our women, mm -hmm. is that I would wish as we move forward, women to understand in this new dispensation, things have really changed. And therefore, when you look at a woman and you believe, uh, you think this is just a woman who has come for a vote, then what? Because one of the narratives on the grassroots, and women must change. Even as women who are looking for this vote, there are some things that we need to change and understand what is the grassroots woman talking about? Because one of the things we find ourselves in is, is, that dis discussion? is, is a disconnect of yeah. that boardroom discussion uh -huh. and the reality 
on the ground. And today, Absolutely. women have moved. They are also very bright. They are women who understand their needs. So if you go there and you believe that you would want to engage on an agenda that they don't understand, mm. then they push off. Number two, we have this narrative, which I have seen also. Many women will ask, will look at you, and they'll tell you, you are better off than so and so. So this is something that also, as women who are going on the grassroots, we need to interrogate ourselves mm -hmm. and say, if I'm going to the grassroots, then I just have to be like my grassroots woman, because I'm a grassroots woman also. Okay. It doesn't mean that when you have reached the, this level, uh -huh. disconnect. And I think that yeah. is where, until, because that's where men beat us. Men will go anywhere, sit, discuss, they won't mind. Women, we have issues. I mean, it's good to talk about it. And women must, uh, we must get it right. You have issues because you want to know who is holding my hand back. And you know, these women are watching. They are wondering, Allah, we are in women. Yes. Some will even be very honest and they'll tell you, ah, these women, ah, sweat. I don't. Those are issues you might think they are very petty, but to them, and they master. They mm. master. Mm. Actually, Your visual very language is very critical when you go now to your women. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I, can mm -hmm. I just add something yeah. to that? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's actually what the research is showing. And yeah. at the African Women's uh, Study Center, it's, mm. um, it basically looks at women's issues across the country. One of the biggest things is there has been a disconnect from the women's organizations, from the grassroots women, and from the women who are elected. Because I think we've forgotten that the reason we have women's seats was because of a very powerful women's movement that was very clear about women's issues. Mm. And women always work together. But I don't know, Senator might agree or disagree, but there has been, there is a feeling on the ground that fewer women are actually even connected to women's groups to know what their issues are, mm -hmm. are in constant communication with them to understand, you know, because it's a shifting, mm -hmm. it's a shifting dynamic. Mm -hmm. So maybe now women have outgrown table banking, for example, and they need, they have other issues. But if you're not connected to the women's group, which is the reason you're even there to begin with, then that's the problem. And I feel that's one of the greatest weaknesses of the women that have been elected. Yeah. Senator, what would have been interesting to see, I, I don't know, and, and this is just hypothetical. For example, uh, you know, there's a drought, there's a high cost of living. Um, you know, these are issues that women bear the greatest brunt of. We've hardly seen, for example, yourself, Senator Zani, uh, a number of, of, of senators across the political divide calling a press conference, for example, and saying these issues must be sorted out. Um, you would call on your party leader, Senator Zani would call on her party leader, and, and, and on and on like that and say, what is happening? Or call on the government and say, look, drought. I mean, we had the drought diary series and women are the ones who, in all of these instances, are walking miles and miles uh, mm -hmm. to get water. The cost of living, it is the woman that knows mm -hmm. how much that packet of unga is. And yet we don't seem to see that sort of connectedness, even across the political divide on this issue. Do you think that is something that would perhaps help and, you know, push this this huge constituency that has the power to decide which way. I mean, I think if women decided by themselves, they could decide that either Uhuru Kenyatta gets a second term mm -hmm. or Raila Odinga or whoever else, uh, you know, is out there, comes in, you know, into state house. You know, the biggest challenge, again, is how we connect now. Whenever we want to move, the moment we bring in our political parties, we will never be together. And that is something all of us have discussed. I know with Senator Zani. But you would wish to move. You do two steps. If you are summoned by your political party, it breaks. So until again women will decide at one point in parliament, we have an agenda that is called women agenda. We have an agenda whether you are in uh, Jubilee or NASA or whatever we call ourselves. In the end of the day, women have no borders. That is the day we shall break the ceiling for the men. So that is the day. You, well, what stops us to be together and do all those things mm -hmm. is just because of our political uh, alienations. Yeah. And you find that I will move now, move to my small constituency, uh -huh. listen to what they are saying, and just do it quietly and finish. So it doesn't have an impact to show the might mm -hmm. that when you are together and united, you can make things move. That's the biggest challenge. Look at what Daisy... So would, you, would, you, would your party frown upon you sitting with other politicians from across the political divide no. and, and no. holding your party to account 
in terms of what a gender it has for women? One thing, even without bringing in Jubilee or my president, mm -hmm. is that one thing I have respected Uhuru. He does not mind when it is development, regardless of the political parties who are seated. And that's why the women, uh, the 47 women, were able to sit down with him and get an affirmative action fund. If it was not for him, today, they will not be speaking of now the developments so they're doing. So there's been an instance where that has yes, worked? Yes, it has worked. Okay. The only problem has been you can now come together, but definitely some will fizzle out because if they are nominated, they feel, uh, now I'll be questioned by the party because mm. I'm nominated. Mm. You know when you're nominated also, you are within boundaries of you have to check yourself very mm. well or else they'll start now bashing and saying, You've become a mall. For us, we are lucky. We have a leader who, even if I would want to critique and say this, we have done wrong, he will never question, but he will follow and feel, yeah, there, what they have said, we can follow. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So okay. those are some of the challenges. L L um, let me give you an example. We are being told that um, this is a two horse race, okay? Two men. <laughs> Two sides. From where I'm seated, I can't tell what the difference is between the two. Let me ask you, uh, uh, Yvonne, why don't we have a woman presidential candidate? We have had before. We have had before. Now, we do not have a woman presidential candidate. And some yet. of the senior, yet, some <laughs> of the senior women politicians in this country are much more qualified to run for president than some of these people running around saying that they want to become presidential candidates. I'll give you an example. Charity Ngilu. There is no, there isn't a politician, male or female, more qualified to run for president than Charity Ngilu today. She was in the trenches many, many years ago when some of these people running around saying that they want to become president, they were still in political diapers. She was in the trenches fighting for the second liberation. She has been in government. She has been in the opposition. She has been in politics. She has run for president mm -hmm. when it was not even fashionable for a woman to run for president. She has all the qualities for a presidential candidate. But because women have accepted the two-horse race, the women have accepted that they ethnic narrative is the only narrative that is possible, then we are not, they're not going to run a woman. She has talked about another absolutely illustrious woman. I don't think there is anybody today running for president who is more qualified to run for president than Dr. Sally Koske. She is a scholar. She is a diplomat. She was in government. She was head of civil service. She's a politician. She understands the people. Why are women not running her for president? Why are they sitting back and waiting for fellows who have absolutely no agenda, no vision for this country to run on an, a, a tribal ticket while there are real women issues mm. that women can run on. And this is why I was saying you cannot sit back and wait to be given these things. Mm. Men will take these things if women don't come out and take them. Okay. I want to see a woman candidature that consolidates the women issues at the national level yeah. so that when we tell the women at the grassroots level that they need to vote, there, there is something to vote for. Right now, there is nothing to vote for. So... <laughs> Are you throwing your hat in the ring now that the professor is, <laughs> is, um, is, is really well, putting down the challenge? I, I would love what professor is saying, but in reality, professor will be like the others. I mean, in the end, Martha did it in 2013. Yeah. What was, what and, was her and, narrative? And, 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 and this is the challenge, sorry. This is the challenge that I have with these people who ran for 2013. They had no narrative, they had no agenda, and we are using them as the measure of whether somebody is successful or not successful. Senator, you cannot use them. Senator, they, yeah. they have Senator, no you would like to respond? No, you cannot, no, 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 you cannot no, 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 use no. somebody who had absolutely no narrative, absolutely no agenda, and say because she failed, somebody else cannot succeed. No, I think, I what, think uh, what women let's have Senator need, respond. What yeah. women need is, number one, and I have said this before you've gone, a new non-ethnic political narrative. So let's have and the senator give us respond a candidate. to that. And they have the candidates, and I've given you the credentials of the candidates well, that they have. Well, the, the only candidate then in among all will be Sally Koske. Mm. Let me be honest. Will be Sally Koske. If you're looking for an non-ethnic, all of them will go back to their backyards, and they have to.
if they the have, narrative it, is it, ethnic. It is not, it, it, it's if not you get a non-ethnic one, prof, then that's, women that's do not need to go back to the ethnic narrative. Fine, prof. Okay. But remember, prof, yes. it is not the... I mean, when you look at women, yes. mm -hmm. whether they like it or not, mm. and that's why Martha had to go through all what she went through. The day Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta said he would be president, trust me, even Martha, and she will remember all our voices. We mm. said, look here, because our politics is so tribal, oh my dear. And anyway, women are the ones who bless the same sons. Let, 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 <laughs> let, let us not run away yes. from that also. So, so our son, they will not remember Martha is also our son. She's they, our they, they, well, I'm just saying, yeah. in terms of now leadership, okay. mm. they will just look at the son. So, then, so even today, uh -huh. look at how today, we've moved on now four years. If any woman today would wish to now go back in the same, what will be? She, she will be told the same narrative. Right, so Senator, and Martha then, tried. Senator, she, she, the Martha had interest, issues. Though, doesn't it? She, Martha, so Martha yeah. went on agenda of issues. She gave her narrative. She gave her five points. Mm -hmm. What she wanted to do to the country, and okay. what we gave back. All right. So I'd was like to, to, to and I and I think like more votes close. came from not central. When you look at her vote uh -huh. base, where she yeah. she got more votes even from Western. We right. gave her more votes. Okay. Yeah. So let's then close because it, it seems like we're in a sort of defeatist space. Right. So we're saying, okay, you know, so we're the not in a defeat, is, Yvonne. Well, well, the, the, the terrain, terrain is, is tough, but I love the way we have so, 12 governors okay. who have come out. Yes, I love amazing. the way I see senators have come out. Right. Mm. I love the way we've seen us going now back to constituency seats. Yeah. It shows that the terrain is tough. But women have agreed with the new dispensation, we must go with this terrain. Are you going Let to be running for an elective office? Yes. Okay. Yes. So the uh, pressure away from you've been nominated, you've been nominated now. Yeah, yeah, you need yeah. To... I mean, uh, the pressure has gone, okay. but uh, the, the, I, I need to ease the pressure, mm -hmm. let another woman come in, do best what she wants. Mm -hmm. and, uh, after, and I believe in 15 years with our new dispensation, yes. we will change. The landscape is going to change thoroughly. What I want to plead to women mm -hmm. is go for the seats of MCAs. Let us first change the county governments and see more women being elected at that level. Mm. And they will change the discourse mm. okay. as we move forward. As we move forward. In yes. fact, incidentally, even as we close, Mumbi, you'll, you'll get the... Uh, we'll have you have the last word and then you close. Incidentally, it was at the county level that they were able to sort out the two-thirds gender rule. They have no problem yeah, at the but county yeah. level. They've had a lot it's of at, challenges yes, with it. But it's at the but National Assembly that we still haven't been able to do Imagine. it. Maybe we could learn a thing or two. You're right, Senator. Mm. Uh, well, I guess for me, it's just to say that the 86 and counting, we had 86 women mm. in the previous um, government. We're, we're now we're hoping for many more. And I'd just like to appeal to the women reps to really, and any woman who's in elected post to remember that they are actually serving such an important role as a visible symbol to other women um, to, and they're, they're able to really encourage them to run and to be part of um, the political landscape and I'd really like to encourage women who are considering to run to definitely run but connect yourself to women's groups connect yourselves to the grassroots women so that you really do have an authentic voice and you are representing their issues Alright, Prof, as you close there's many people that say, oh but those 47 women reps, they've not done anything and you know, we need to do away with them. You're hearing the narrative. But yes. in fact, if you want to cut down on the wage bill, that's the that's first, first place to place. chop. Yes. And for so long as women are saying that this is a difficult terrain and they're waiting for the landscape to change, that is going to happen. Because like I have said, the language of power in politics is not a give me story. It is... But surely, Prof, we should yes. be asking the same of all other members of parliament. Yes. Why is it that women are the easy target? Uh, so you say, but the women reps have not done anything. We could point out a number of other male MPs yes. who've done nothing, yes. who've yes. hardly spoken in yes. parliament, yes. who've hardly contributed a bill yes. uh, or that sort of thing. So how do we get ourselves away from that narrative of you know women being uh, the easy ones to pick on if you're the easy one to pick on in the field you will be picked on the question you need to ask yourself is why are you the easy one to be picked on mm -hmm. change that and you change the narrative that is number one number two Beatrice has talked about an ethnic narrative that we cannot do anything about mm -hmm. there is no narrative that we cannot do anything about mm -hmm. the ethnic narrative is just that a narrative and the antidote to a narrative is a counter narrative what women have been unable to do 
is to come up with a counter narrative that puts women issues at the center. The people who control the space are those people who have the ethnic narrative. Until we imagine a counter narrative, they will rule us forever. Beatrice is very hopeful that the landscape is going to change. It will not change. Until ah. we get a counter narrative, we will simply exchange one tribalist for another tribalist. Because whether that story, is man yeah, or woman? Whether that man or woman, okay. because the narrative works for them. Politicians will not leave a narrative that works for them. It is the people who will say, this narrative is not working for us, we need to change it, and come up with a counter narrative. Okay. Do I see possibilities of that counter narrative coming, coming from, from women? women? Yes. Okay, all right. A good place to wind that up. Professor Wainaina, mm -hmm. Senator Beatrice Elachi, sure. and Dr. Mumbi Wetstein. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for that. So, that is what is being said. Do you think women can offer that counter narrative to the tribal one we see on our political landscape? Well, you let me know. The hashtag is Checkpoint. We'll continue to talk about this, of course, in days and weeks to come. Uh, and, of course, continue to have more women on the show. You know, we always make sure we have one, maybe two. Uh, on every show. So thanks for texting in and tweeting in. Keep them coming. I will sample your views at the end of this conversation. Thank you very much uh, for speaking with us on this issue. We'll wait to see if the terrain is indeed different in 2017. It's a conversation we'll have again and again before August the 8th. You're watching Checkpoint. We're taking a quick break. We'll be right back.